Um, Liam, no doubt you've looked back at the Southampton and, and the Norwich games. Is there, is there one particular learning you can share with us, having watched back the games, those, those two defeats? Hard, hard to narrow it down to one. I think, um, yeah, the whole week, I thought, you know, even from the Middlesbrough to, to Norwich, which was obviously only an eight-day period, I think it was a, a terrific opportunity to learn lots about the group. We'd obviously had two weeks training leading into that, which I know I said after the game. Um, so it was, you know, a really, really good opportunity over the course of a week to see what they're able to transfer and, you know, what bits are in a good place and what bits need to be worked on and improved. So, yeah, they, they, there was some, like I said, I thought there was a, it was a frustrating week from a points perspective, but actually from a, perfor a performance perspective, I thought there was some real progress um, and some real good things in what we're looking to do here. Um, and, and, and like I said, that's the bit that excites me about the group. So where can you improve going into the weekend? Of course, not giving goals away helps. I think that, that was a big part of it, um, which, you know, when you looked at all three games, we said Middlesbrough was on us, ultimately. Southampton, half the game was on us at the first half, so arguably you could come away with something there. And then Norwich was on us as well. So I think that was the... Uh, the big bit. It's about sharpening up in some of the basics. I think they need to, you know, we, we've had a chat this week with the lads and that's staff, players, everybody, you know, making sure that, you know, the basics are, are in a really good spot, which is definitely something that we need to drive daily and standard uh, in training on the pitch, off the pitch, around the place, making sure they're all in a, in a good spot. Uh, I thought the control was really good, but now turning control into chances is definitely something that that, you know, we need to, to improve that. But like I said, when, you, when you've had two weeks of training in four, it's difficult to cover the, you know, the whole of the way you want to work. So there's definitely been steps forward in uh, what, what we're asking the players to do. And now it's about, you know, revisiting, but also adding to. Um, you've got a real asset in Tommy Conway. How do you get the best and, and more importantly, goals out of Tommy? Yeah, and numerous bits, I think there's no secret, it's hard work. It's looking back at the bits that you do well, looking back at the bits that you don't do well, and then going out on the training pitch and replicating it so that, you know, when you're in those positions and those situations again in the future, you're, you know, you've, you've got the confidence and uh, that you've worked on it and you know what you're doing. I think that's the biggest bit. If you step on the pitch and you're not clear, I think it becomes more difficult. So managing emotions, not beating yourself up. Part of your job as a striker is to miss chances, hopefully not too many. Um, but like I said, it, it, Tommy will score goals. It's now about making sure that you know, it's about becoming more clinical and improving constantly, which you know, he's been in, he's been doing video, he's been doing extra finishing with, with Hoggy. So I think you know, that, that, that's something that you know, the AG is at. It's, it's going through that sticky period, sticking by him and, and going, right, come on now, come out the other side and, and go and convert. You know, he's got three, three one and ones. He's had some terrific opportunities to go and, go and convert those chances into goals. And if I could be positive, would you be more concerned if he wasn't getting the chances in games? Yeah, exactly. And we, we actually we looked at all his goals back and, you know, they're, they're actually slightly different types of chances for him where he's getting slid in centrally or, you know, like we said, the, the 1v1s. You know, if you actually look at a lot of his goals, they, they've been off crosses before. So, again, he's, he's getting uh, different types of chances now, which, again, is, you know, and I, I, I back him to score those in the future. I've got no concerns. Um, you're still waiting to have Naki available. Um, how much longer do you hope to have him back in first team contention? Because it would be good just to have him as a support for, for Tommy on and off the pitch. Yeah, and he, he does that now. I think, you know, he, obviously having him around the group, you know, um, on a match day will be a big thing. But it's, uh, I say Naki's been incredible in terms of, I know he still he watches Tommy's clips, he, he sits with him, he speaks with him, he's, he's still a, you know, a real support to him, which again is what we want in the culture we've got here. Um, so Naki's been out on the grass this week. He, uh, it's a part, part of it, you, it's hard to put you know, a definitive number of days on it. You have to see how they respond to, you know, certain steps in the rehab process. So. Um, he's, he's, like I said, he's been out on the grass you know, this week, so hopefully uh, he'll, he'll continue heading in the right direction. And other than that, you've got the same squad as last week. There were no fresh injuries from the weekend? No, no everybody seems in a good spot. So it's yeah, make, making sure now that, like I said, it's about learning from, from the, the week that we had and you know, trying to build on some of the positives. Two long trips. How do you, off the pitch as well as only, prepare for the, the games coming up against Huddersfield and Blackburn? Yeah, quick turnarounds. I think obviously staff will be under the pump in terms of getting everything ready. Uh, and it's that it's the right the right balance. You know, physically the games will will you know are, are tough in terms of that overload and how we manage that. But at the same point, you know, psychologically the demands that we put on the players with the meetings that we have, um, and then also you know the, the psychological demands of the games we have to be be mindful of that as well. So we'll you know we've got a terrific group of staff here that that you know they're assessing everything to make sure that. You know, we keep the, the players in the best place possible, so when you know, kickoff comes, they're in the freshest place possible. And Huddersfield with Darren Moore as manager, one defeat in five. What, what can we expect on Saturday from the opposition? Really tough game. You know, huge amount of credit to, to Darren Moore, who's you know gone in and done a done a really good job in you know shifting momentum into a positive way for them. I think if you get the lights on. 
if you if you look at um, you know, I've watched them, you know, obviously been watching them this week, and if you look at them, they're re really honest and hard working. I think that's the which I talk a lot about. That's definitely the starting point, and then they're you know terrifically well organised. You know, they're not they're not giving up many goals, they're not giving up many chances. Difficult to beat, work with terrific intensity, you know, um, and, and carry a real threat on the counter attack. So they're they're, they're I have to say I've, I've been impressed in terms of watching them what he's done there. And from what I gather, Huddersfield, they won't mind if you have the ball, maybe more possession. So is it important that in possession, you're lethal with the ball? Yeah, I think it's being prepared for everything. I don't think uh, I'd hate to be presumptuous in that they're going to come, you know, come out at home and, and sit off and let us have it. So we, we have to be prepared for everything, which we will be. Um, but, but whatever they do, if they, if they press, if they block, whatever they decide, it's around us. You know, making the right decisions, finding the right solutions. And, yeah, and like I said, however the chances come, then being ruthless and clinical with it. Thank you. Cheers. Naki was out on the grass. We saw Andy King and Ross McCrory as well. I appreciate that Ross is a delicate one. You did say he's ahead of schedule. Um, is he still making that sort of level of progress? Encouraging? Think yeah, so? en encouraging progress, definitely. Yeah, he's, he's, like I said, he's building. You, you, have to think, you have to remember how long he's been out and you know, things like pre season and it's almost yeah. like elements of that. So just the conditioning work that he'll need will be massive. But yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely heading in the right direction, touch wood. So. Long may that continue because, again, he, he'll, be a, he'll be a terrific asset to get back. And Andy King, who's been out of the hamstring, um, is he getting closer to contention? Yeah, so he, he did a tiny bit of ball work with the group today in terms of tight area stuff. So, you, you know, with, with the injury, the hamstring injury, what you can't do is open him up. So we, we managed to integrate him into a tiny bit this week, but he's, he's still a few weeks away. So, he'd, like I say, it's great, great to see him out there as well and uh, have him around it. What's kind of his role? Because obviously your predecessor kind of had him a little bit part of the coaching team. Andy was always very keen to emphasise he was a player first, coach second. Is that dynamic still there or do you kind of see him as a player at the moment? Yeah, first and foremost as a player. I think, you know, um, yeah, at the same point, I use him a lot in meetings. So he'll have a voice in you know, some of the meetings we've had this week, for example. You know, why would you not want to lean on his experience? So... I have lots of lots of little individual chats with him, but I also ask him to speak regularly in front of the group. So, um, but you know, at the minute, yeah, I think he has a lot in his play in terms of concentrating on getting fit and making sure that that is his priority, so that you know he can be available for selection. So, yeah, he, he's someone that that is, is terrific to have around the group, and someone that I you know I do bounce little bits off. Just going back to Tommy, um, again, it was before your time, but you, you don't sense there's any kind of sort of mental baggage with his injuries at all. Um, because he's had two hamstrings in a year, and I think they were different when he, he side. Um, in terms of his sort of explosive, his, his high intensity sprints, you don't see any evidence that that's a concern for him. No, not at all. I don't. Uh, you know, if, and even if he watched the chances back, it doesn't. I mean, the, the one right before half time on on Sunday, where he, you know, the, the movement's terrific to get him behind, um, which again, like I said, is a little bit new for him. So it's, it's then those when you're in those moments, you know, and you haven't had a high number of repetition of those types of chances in games before. You know, it's, it's then becoming familiar with those. So, so, you know, unfortunately, like the team losing, sometimes you have to go through, you know, the bad side of it to actually learn and, and you know, be able to, you know, take confidence that you've been in those positions before and then what to do next. Um, there's been a sort of, as, you, as you're always going to get from a defeat, um, there's been a sort of a, a, an element of angst um, in terms of kind of where the club is right now. Um, and there's been sections of the support of kind of, um, concerned the concept of a rebuild, that this is a rebuild. Um, I just kind of wondered how you saw your kind of, um, if you want to call this a project or your time, what you're doing right now. Do you see it as a rebuild? No, I don't see it as a rebuild. I see it as um, a, a different way of working. I think, you know, um, and like I said, I think the players have, have really responded well to that. Um, and, and like I said, they've craved the information that we've given them. So. I don't see it as a rebuild. I see it as, you know, we're, we're, we're desperate to do well now. Um, but at the same point, you have to work for the medium and long term as well, right? I think that's the, you know, when you're a custodian in the club, whatever you want to call it, I think, you know, the position I'm in, I'll, we do everything in our power to, to make sure that we're ready to go, obviously starting Saturday and then Tuesday and then the, the week after. But at the same point, you have to have an eye on the medium and long term to make sure that we do everything for the best interest of the club. So, yeah, that, that, that's where I'm at with it. It's coming in. And of course, when you, inevitable when you get changed, you know, it doesn't, Sometimes you get a bounce. Sometimes, you know, in the way we're working, I think you see the benefits of it in the in the longer term, definitely. When you say the longer term, what do you have a kind of an idea 
in your head? <laughs> no, I, I, th I think, you know, things like, uh, you know, look, the group in terms of obviously you've got the, the short term is Saturday, then you've got obviously January, then you've got the summer and then obviously, you know, things that speaking with Brian and with Sean and, you know, things, you know, what, what does the squad look like in the next couple of years? I think that, that, that that's the important aspects, which, like I said, for me, we work day to day to make sure that everything's right, you know, the right decision for the club and not, you know, selfishly sometimes just go, right, it, it's about impact now and, and not beyond that. So I think you, that's what we're trying to do, we're trying to work in a way where, um, whether it be recruitment, whether it be on the grass, we're, we're, we're coaching players for now, but also for the future. This might seem a bit of an odd question, but do, are there, the, the last few games, are there things you think you could have done that could have been more effective to get a result, but may have impacted kind of the growth or the development of the team in terms of how you could have approached the games? Not massively. I thought. I thought if you if you look at the two, especially obviously Southampton and Norwich, where everyone's going to talk about the, the the defeats, of course. Um, and, you know, they help me. I want to win. But if you actually look at the the game plan, and there's only so much you could information you can put into the players in such a short period of time, and that you know that's why sometimes having a preseason is a beautiful thing because you've got such a long period of time plus games to experiment on it and, and get them core principles. When you're trying to do it, you know, in a, obviously in a transition period like we are, you have to accelerate that. So. Um, that's why hopefully sometimes having a bad experience you can learn quickly from it to go right let's not do that again um, but when I look at the game plan against Southampton if we'd come in at 2-0 and we'd finish with a draw every, everybody would have you know not questioned everything the same then at the weekend um, I was talking to Brian about it I, you know, I, I didn't actually see the game but if you apparently when you know, the, when, when we played Norwich in the cup earlier in the, in the season it was a completely different looking mm -hmm. game so again I think what we didn't get the result but if you actually look at it and pretty much everybody that was in the stadium or anybody that watched the game knows that the result you know, was, wasn't, for me, what it should have been in terms of you know, the, the control, the chances created, etc. Um, so I think it's just going through that process. The, the wins will come, I'm sure of it, when we're working like we do. Um, and again, I think you know, we've, played a, we've, we've had a really tough week from that, that perspective in terms of results, but so many positives that come from the performance that you know, I'm, I'm excited by you know, the progress that we can make. How does that help you get over the defeats? I was a thing I've um, this is too earlier in the in the week. Sorry, I was watching American sports, but there was a coach on there who said he remembers every defeat, but victories are like a sort of a ten minute moment of elation, and then you kind of move on. But defeats always linger. I just wondered if you if that if that was sort of resonated with you in any way. Um, what sport was it? I have NFL. NFL. Pro I'd say probably probably different in that because of the nature of. The nature of the football league and the championship, you, you actually can't dwell yeah. on it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I think yeah. if you're week to week and you're on a schedule like that, then maybe. But I think in terms of it, you kind of get hardened to the fact that you don't have time. So, so for me, I can't. And I'm not that type of person. It, it's around performance. So, so for me, let's assess performance rather than. And the only way you do that is through an analytical lens, rather than, you know, if you get clouded by emotion and fogged up by emotion, you actually miss the things that are going to allow you to get better. So. Uh, yeah, of course it hurts. I hate it. I hate losing. I want to win everything I do. Um, but at the same point, again, I, I think what I'm able to do a little while after the game, obviously, is to you know to, to go and watch the game back through an analytical lens rather than a really emotional one. Thanks, Liam. Thank you. Hi, Liam. Uh, it's a month today since you were announced Bristol City manager. I just wondered, uh, in the first 30 days, how intense but enjoyable <laughs> was it? Been? 30 days? It was like that three years. It's, it's a... Uh, I loved it. Loved every minute of it. To be fair, it's been it's been one of those. I think you know, um, it takes you a little bit of time to get in a flow state. You know, in terms of just the rhythm of the building, connections with people, the ways of working, everybody kind of, you know, getting up to speed with what we're looking for and how we're working. So we're, I'd say we're we're a lot closer to that flow state, which is good. Um, culturally, we uh, I think we're making progress in those areas as well, which is for me something that we have to work at every single day. Um, so that's definitely progressed. Uh, yeah, the games, like I said, the, the, the games are the biggest part of learning, right? We can do terrific sessions in coaching, but it's how well does that transfer in the game? So, like I said, there's been shoots in terms of progress from that, and, and it's definitely bits that we'll, we'll continue to build on. Uh, so, yeah, no, I've loved it. Love, I say, love the area, love the training facility, love the atmosphere at home. And, and yeah, look, looking forward to hopefully building on the, you know, the first month. Yeah, and you mentioned it would take time to kind of build up, you mentioned you kind of started with defence patterns of play, moving up the pitch. I noticed there was a lot of uh, finishing going on this week in training. Are you kind of happy that the initial foundations and core principles are kind of starting to make their way now all over the pitch? 
Yeah, I think so. I think if you, if knowledge is a good example, right, of the, the out of possession, the, you know, the, sh the structure, the shape, the being connected, the, you know, for, first, you know, and, uh, I think what the lads have shown is an, an element of us being adaptable. So, you know, we can go to Southampton and block, but at the same point, we can play Norwich at home and press. So, again, I think that, that but at the same point, understanding the principles and nothing goes through us, which, again, I think that was a bit, if you look at the first half against Norwich, the, the press was good. We just didn't then f see it through in terms of we allowed them down the sides too easily, but in the right areas, which, again, when, you, when you're looking at the work we do, is we've got them where we want them now, now take the ball. That's the final step. So, I definitely see I definitely seen progress in you know some of the structural things, some of the understanding of what we're trying to do, and I have to give credit to the, the staff and the players because they've picked it up really quickly. Yeah, in terms of patterns of play, kind of in the final third in the attacking area, are you kind of a manager that uh, gets the players to work on certain kind of movements and and kind of link ups, or is it very much kind of just to express yourself, do things more off the cuff, being a bit unpredictable, a bit some, a mixture? Probably a balance of the two, I'd say. I think you know I want players to especially your attacking players, they'll, they'll do things that I can't coach them. <laughs> they'll see things that I don't see. So again, I think the, the big bit is getting them in positions to bring their strengths. So, you know, I think that, that, again, looking at what we've done against Norwich, first half game plan, excellent, and going back through, second half we forced them back in the block and, you know, the structure wasn't, a little, wasn't quite right where we ended up with belly inside and 90 outside. So for me, you're then going, well, I want that the other way because I want belly going 1v1 down the outside and 90 inside, obviously, for the, for the finishing action at the end. So. It's definitely, um, it's definitely we'll, we'll give them an, a, an element of, the, the whole point of the control is to get them to that area to then go and bring them. So whether it be 1v1s, whether it be combinations, we'll work on bits like that. But for me, it's them then working together to come up with the right solution. Um, it's like, talk to the lads about if you're a winger, but you're up against the Kyle Walker where you're not going to get success. What's plan B? What's plan C? Whereas if you're getting success against the fullback, then keep, keep going 1v1. So... Freedom in them areas, areas of the pitch, as long as the organisation behind the ball's good, which we did really well against Norwich, call it the rest of fence, where the organisation outside the box allows us to an attack and attack, and you suffocate them and don't let, allow them out. So them bits are good. Like I said, the, the, the final third stuff's bits that we're, that we're definitely working on. Yeah, and one uh, attack, attacking minor player that hasn't featured as of yet under uh, your reign here is um, Efram Yubar. Um I just wonder, kind of a month in, how he's adapting to the to the new way of playing, if you like, and kind of how close is he to maybe getting some minutes at some point? Yeah, terrific, terrific character as well. He came and knocked on the door and, and you know, we had a chat around, you know, what he's got to do. And I think sometimes you, you know, you're a, a little bit of a little victim, I'd say, of sort of, you know, um, change to a certain extent, which I had a chat with him, obviously, fresh, young. I think sometimes coming in, knowing what you're going to get a little bit is important in terms of trying to hit the ground running. But... He's really progressed in training. I've been really pleased with you know the, the the steps he's made. He's someone that's really willing to work, really honest. He's got some real real attributes to be fair to him, which you know he needs polishing up in certain areas. But that's his job. That's our job to work to, to make happen. Um, and like I said to him, you, you keep his head down, keep working, and I'm sure the opportunity will come. Yeah, and obviously he is such a raw talent, only 18, 17, 18. Is that kind of final piece you're on about? Is it basically decision making, which obviously just does come with game time? Yeah, an element of that. I think an element of understanding the positional play, which is completely different for him. So again, I think you know understanding how to how to do that because again, the, the alignment in that's quite important. You know, out of possession role, etc. You know, that becomes equally as important when you when you look at the the level of opposition we played recently. You know, the tactical side of it's been been extremely detailed. So there, there are bits that he's learning. Again, I think that's the the, the big bit. The like I said to him, the, 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 keep your head down, keep working, and the minutes will come.